Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Now in its third season, You, Me, Her has done a wonderful and hilarious job exploring the messy complications of human desire and sexuality. In a minute, we'll be joined by You, Me, Her uh, stars Greg Poehler, Rachel Blanchard, and Priscilla Faya. But let's take a quick look at the trailer for the upcoming season. I'm happy in Seattle at Pinnacle with Kylie. You guys make sense. I'm the piece that doesn't fit. We did this together, all three of us, not just you. But you're right, it was a mistake. Guess we'll see you Monday. Yeah. Everybody, please welcome Greg Poehler, Rachel Blanchard, and Priscilla Fire from wow. You, Me, Her. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Hey. The title makes you want to say and, and her. Yes, it's a comedy. And I'm having a problem reading my prompter, so I don't know if you heard me. I was like, you, me, her. It's you, me, her. It took a second. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this. How's it going? Good. What a powerful scene you? that was. <laughs> It was very dramatic, very dramatic, very dramatic. scene to funny be setting up. Lots of silent pauses. It's funny. Well, the show has some dramatic moments. There's a yeah. fair amount of drama mixed with the comedy. Uh, it's also, as I was telling you before, it's very, very good at cliffhangers. Very good at cliffhangers this season. Let's talk about where your characters were last season and what's going on with you as we come into the third. Obviously, the uh, threesome has uh, broken up. So let's talk about that. Where is where is your character? Uh, well, yeah. So Izzy, this season we pick up. It's been four months, and uh, Izzy and Jack are living in the loft that he bought for the three of us. Um, but it's just the two of us. So we're, you know, finding what that dynamic looks like. Just going, you know, now that Emma's gone. Um, yeah, and for the first time, Izzy's trying to figure out what her lo what her life looks like because she's always been really enthralled in what's been happening with the three of us together that now you know she's redirecting herself to school and her dad comes back into the picture and so it gets to be um more complicated and your character is kind of figuring out exactly what she likes yeah. or has Who she, she figured it out I think she, you know it's a journey she's figuring that out she's living emma's living in seattle she's working at her dream job dating a new woman kylie and just trying to find her way a little bit. I think one of the things that I like about this show is that it's a journey, but it's a journey amongst people who are fairly mature and articulate about their journeys and not, so the conflicts are never met with like uh, frustration or breaking things all that often. It's people kind of just like, you know, sensitively discussing where, where they're going next, which is kind of refreshing to see on, on television. Your character is kind of dealing with age. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> my character yeah, I and watch. myself. I just looked over. I was like, assumed that was what was going on. No, <laughs> Let me guess. Age is your your problem? Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, I think Jack is is uh, talking about. He he certainly talks about his his feelings a bit too much. I think on the show, but he's he's you know like he's always been, just trying to figure it out. Um, I think the show is really about a couple who or three people who find themselves in a situation they never thought they would be in. And the timing of the, the three seasons, we're still only about, I would say, it's six months after you know, the initial meeting, if you go time-wise. So yeah. it's just been a whirlwind for him, and, and I still think he and the other characters are trying to figure out what, what's happening. Yeah. They're Googling polyamory, I'm guessing, and, and being shocked by the results, <laughs> perhaps. That's got to be such an interesting thing for the writers to know that their characters are only six months into the future from when you started this in 2014 or yeah. 2015. Yeah. And also tough Because on the, the world the, is going to change in a big way for them in like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like they're in for some big changes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I never think about that. Maybe it is a pre-Trump era where we're still in <laughs> happier times. Um, going into the third season, and oftentimes going into the second season of a show, you know, uh, showrunners and writers tend tend to start writing for the actors and really knowing what challenges them and what they're good at and also probably pitching to them sometimes. What is it like working with the writers on the show? It is such an intimate ex sort of exploratory show. Right. Um, well, John Scott Shepard, who is our uh, creator and writer, he writes the series on his own. So it's just him, yeah. And um, he, 
he definitely, like the first season, it was already put together. Um, but as the seasons have progressed, he definitely has put in like our kind of little things that we say or um, dynamics that we have with one another um, that slowly get gets put in. And also, three years into a show, we get to know our characters more. So, you know, um, it becomes easier. So when you have like a new director on set, you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't do that. <laughs> Well, we have, we have, <laughs> my character doesn't do that. Do no, that. I'm kidding. You yeah. don't do that. We have uh, we block shoot, so everything's shot out of sequence, and really? mm -hmm. yeah. so we have the, and we have the same director for the oh. entire season. Oh yeah. wow! So the whole thing is basically written, and you you guys are yeah. taking like a month or two months to shoot, like basically shoot it like a movie. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's that's incredible. Is that tough on you guys as actors going back and forth or? Yes. <laughs> not, not for me, I'll be honest. It's, uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's, it's the only thing I've done, actually. My previous show was the same way, so wow. I don't know anything different. For me, the, the, the toughest challenge is, like, I, I'm not joking when I say, like, to keep my weight the same <laughs> through the 10 weeks. I usually try to, get, like, go on a diet right, right before we start, and then I'm like, shit, i got to stay at this exact weight <laughs> for the next 10 weeks. And the same beard, you know. Length. Oh, that's well. true. You have a very specific trim, but I yeah. imagine your your makeup person gives. Yeah, you a somebody's that. in charge of that, but it's yeah. it, it takes. But the weight, action. on the other hand, that's all on you. It is. Yeah. There's a big craft service table. <laughs> exactly that, that I have you know. to avoid. Problem. The candy yeah. after yeah. long days. Yeah. I always wondered about that with actors and actresses of the craft. How do you not participate? Because there's a fair amount of downtime, I imagine, even on a show that probably moves fairly pretty quickly. To just downtime for me is like I'm gonna eat. I'm just gonna fill this time and void with eating. Yeah. That's kind of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're also, you, you know, they're, they're long days, so you need to eat a lot. Yeah. It's underrated though, how, like, how much you move when you're acting. Like, uh, there's a lot of, even like just, you know, when you're walking around in scenes and you're on your feet a lot all day. So that's my justification for, <laughs> for, for the donuts that I'm grabbing at the, I, the I forget food. to eat. I know that there's uh, always food around. I do. Okay. I do. And then when the candy tray comes, I forget to eat until the candy tray comes. Okay. And then I just fill up on, on candy. So that's, uh, I, I remember. that's the I remember diet. What's it like to have the, uh, the sort of the threesome break apart in for, for this season? You know, for the last two, season, I, two seasons, it's been the three of you sort of exploring this story. And now I feel like a, a fair amount of your scenes aren't really with the two of them anymore. What's that like? It was uh, a lot of my scenes this year, particularly at the beginning, were with my new girlfriend, and that was really it was it was fun, but it was really different. I was like, oh, I miss Greg and Priscilla, yeah. you know, because we're in such a groove with shooting our scenes. What about you guys missing missing her? Uh, you, you, it was, you can lie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, easier to do two people, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, the dynamic is uh, obviously. I mean, that's uh, what's interesting for us about the show, and just when, when we're shooting, especially love scenes with the three of us. Um, that it's just there's something odd literally about it because it's, it's an odd number and so part of the uh, awkwardness of those type of scenes is, is, is being the person who's not involved in the, in the kiss like the person that's standing on deck essentially I think that's the reality too <laughs> yeah but it's like this and, you're just, and it's, oh they're going now and then you're just kind of creepily you know leering <laughs> waiting for your moment take to a sip in. of water so in that sense, you know, the, the you really got to watch your face in that, you <laughs> yeah, know, because like, any face you make could come off as sort of creepy, you <laughs> right. know, even if yeah. it's just blank. Right. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, that's going to be weird. Hands, it's all that stuff. So um, in that sense, it's, it's easier to have just one person <laughs> to, be, to be acting off of. <laughs> it's far less awkward. And uh, Priscilla and I hadn't had too many scenes with just the two of us together. So that was, it was nice to, to work, work with her at the beginning of the season. But uh, there are several, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there are, um, there, there are scenes with all of us together yeah. uh, again. Yeah. The dream sequence. <laughs> dream <laughs> sequence, yeah. When you guys first signed on to this show, what was it 2015, 2014, 2015? 2015. You signed on to do a show that was, you know, about... Uh, polygamy or essentially a threesome. Um, did you think it would last this long? And how, what did you think it would be like? How far did you think it would have to go to maintain? Because one of the things that I've sort of loved about the show is that it hasn't felt like it's needed to sort of press more buttons mm -hmm. to, to stay alive. It feels like it's staying alive by telling the story. Right. For me, I, I wanted to, I signed on to it sort of more thinking of doing a sort of polyamory show. I, um, and I think that's something that you don't really see on television, and I like the idea 
of it not being like a male fantasy. It was just the reality of this relationship, and it happened to be three people together. So I thought I thought that that was something interesting. Yeah, um, to just build on what Rachel was saying, I think the misconception when you first hear about the show is that it's like one guy and two girls, and you know you kind of have your ideas of what that means. Um, the majority of the agency in the couple is is from the two the, the two women. Right. Yeah. Right. And kind of just hangs back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I I really liked that. I really liked that there, especially in the first season, there was kind of this really strong connection here that made Jack feel really insecure. And I, I liked the idea of like kind of flipping the that fantasy on, on its head. Um, and I think it's important to show these types of relationships, alternative relationships in a realistic type of way. Have you ever heard have you ever heard from any other people in alternative relationships that have seen the show and been like, oh that really that is really how it happened for me or that's what it is actually like? Yeah, the ladies seem to hear more from them <laughs> than I do I have to say in in real life. But no, we, we've got no. The guys just kind of walk. They go nice. Yeah, <laughs> keep going. No, I mean, there's, uh, we were talking about this on the way over here actually. But there's 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 it's less frequent that uh, you know, couples are looking for um, a man uh, as their third. Um, right. and much more. So the, these women get much more requests than, than I do. In fact, there was a gay couple that even wanted Priscilla. As their third at one of our gay male couple. Event, events, gay male couple, yeah. Oh which, God, that is such which a which was a killer for me. Like it was like my one opportunity <laughs> to be in, to be at least invited. <laughs> she even got that one. I was like, oh, such a you know such a confidence. That sort of like sounds like the worst version of people not being able to tell the difference between uh, fiction and yes. reality. Oh, totally. Like, yeah. oh, sweet, you, you, you must guys, be you guys are this. into this, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're a couple, and yeah. do you actually get that? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked. I'm sorry. Yeah, I yeah, know. What is that like? Um, awkward. <laughs> I mean, it's like a compliment, but it's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, you go like you know that. Yeah. Yes, I show. have. Yeah. But then I'm like, but if you're, you know, <laughs> if you want to, yeah. But there's a reason I signed on to that show. So <laughs> if you're, yeah. Yeah. No, but, oh. I, but we have gotten a lot of feedback from the the people in 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 the polyamory community, and they're very excited to have a show that deals with it in, a, in an honest way and in a realistic way and doesn't try to you know, sensationalize it or, or make it salacious. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's a show that, uh, you know, it's, it's a relationship like any other in many ways. Um, after you get over the fact that there's three people involved, um, our relationship on the show has the same trials and tribulations as, as any other. What is it like having, I mean, you said that the John Shepard, excuse me? Yeah. yeah, John Scott Shepard. John Scott Shepard, who writes all of the episodes. Is he on set for all of the shooting as well? How does that, how does that go? Because, I mean, that's yes. so much work. Yeah, he works, he works really hard. He's a very um, present producer, writer of the show, and he's really involved and has a very strong vision for his voice, uh, or voice for the show. Um, so, yeah, he's there all the time to consult with. And, and you know... In terms of collaborating with him, um, he, especially when we get to set, he's pretty great at, you know, if we've got thoughts or something isn't working or something something is working, he'll build on it and change it. And, like, in that sense, he's very hands-on. That must be so difficult because usually on most shows, like, each episode has a new writer. So if you can approach that writer, it's like their one responsibility to sort of take that. He's responsible for all the episodes. So any questions, it's like, oh, i got to right. go back to the drawing board here. Yeah, and Sarah St. Ange, who directed, she actually directed all of season two and season three. Um, her and John work really closely together um, to work out, you know, kinks or whatever and to make sure that we're... We really rely on them to make sure that we're exactly where we need to be because we shoot so crazy out of sequence. So um, we're really lucky. So you'll be kind of at like one location for like a week, and that'll cover mm -hmm. the entire season, and then move to another for a week. Yeah. In fact, exactly. there was, I was just talking about this earlier today, but there was one week when I was in bed for the entire entire week. Every scene was a bed scene. We did them all at once, and I was I literally stayed in bed. Even between takes, I would, they were like, well, "You want to, you know, we got to fix the lighting." I'd be like, "I'm good." I'm like, "This is the hardest week to make <laughs> your weight." It bet. was probably <laughs> the best working week of my life. I literally was in bed. You fell asleep a couple of times. I did. Too. Yeah. We're like, yeah, I right. committed. Yeah. I, was, I was supposed to be asleep in the scene, right? Some of them. Method. <laughs> Some well, of that them. makes that makes perfect sense. If you're supposed to be asleep in a scene, yeah. you have to close your eyes. You would probably yeah. fall asleep. And it's yeah. Or in between setups, you would probably could fall asleep yeah. as well. The snoring, you know, can be a problem. <laughs> I, I found, especially when you like have the. Did that ever the, happen? The wake up snore, like, you know. Yeah, there was one. There was one. Yeah. Uh, we have a scene where um, we're asleep and there's a phone call, and it was just 
like off, off, like we weren't supposed to be saying anything, and he was totally asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get some questions from our audience. Here's a question. Hi, guys. Over here. Um, Hello. Hello. So I was wondering, because this show kind of centers around something that can be awkward, I guess, in a way, um, what was the most awkward scene for you guys to film, if at all? The awkward scene to shoot? It, it, yeah, uh, definitely for me it was the first, first love, love scene, scene we yeah. had to do in season one. There was a lot of body parts and cameras. And, and it filmed was, in a very, in very cramped quarters. Right, and our director was just kind of like, move here, pull, you know, move the hair. And it's just like, so weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me it was, um, there was a scene that I was shooting with Rachel in <clears throat> season one and uh, I was supposed to be naked, um, and the, I don't know if you know the, the mechanics of these of these scenes, but you, there's there's various things you can put on. Um, sock. Yeah, it's it's called a sock, but it's 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 not actually a sock. It's like a skin colored thing that's kind yeah. of attached. Yeah. But they didn't have one of those, so they actually gave me a sock. And it was an old sock of mine. <laughs> it, was, it was like a pearl <laughs> sock. And it was like a bl black sock. It was just kind of, and she didn't know, like, because they gave it to me. I was like, all right, you know, it's like my first experience with it. And so I kind of just oh, it came in the doorway, <laughs> and she just immediately starts laughing. Well, you're also trying not to look at that area. It's respectful, and it's like this black sock with a pink rim around it. It's like, is that my sock? <laughs> yeah. So that, that was doing around your. I believe you also experience. had a candy cane patterned I one too. Yeah, is, I've had very cane interesting um, coverage on the area. Does that make sort of any scene that could be vulnerable or embarrassing Sexy? easier to shoot? Oh, sorry, or no, yes. easier to shoot <laughs> since you kind of started there with the show? Yeah, I think that's my advice to actors is to have the, the most ridiculous uh, sock uh, penis coverage. Get you it in your contract. You can have, yeah. First yeah. day, nude Oh, scene. nice picture on there. Make everyone uh, comfortable. Um, yeah, so there's, there's various things you can use for that, but that, any, anytime I have to put something around my junk, uh, it becomes uh, immediately funny. To me. Do you guys feel like the most uncomfortable people are the crew? <clears throat> yeah, sometimes you know because they're just like try they're trying, trying not you know, to look like dumb. Not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's when the changing a lens too, and you're just sitting there, just you know, they're like, oh, sorry, I gotta, gotta go to a different lens. So I just all right. Um, next question. Hi. Uh, Hello. So, hi. 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 Uh, so between seasons, do you do you guys? Just, uh, think about your characters or anticipate where that story is going to go or where your characters are going to go? I do, yeah. I'm always yeah. curious to see what we're going to be reading for the next season. Yeah. yeah. it's. I mean, it, it's interesting because each time, I, talking about John, he's he's surprised me every year because I, I've, I've always had ideas for what's going to happen next with the, with the thruple. Uh, and with Jack in particular, and uh, every year it's, it hasn't been at all <laughs> the script that I've gotten. So it's, uh, that's more of a kudos to him, or maybe how bad I am at storytelling. <laughs> um, so it's, I'm excited. To, to hopefully we'll, we'll keep going and, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anytime there's like a great story that you're invested in, you're always wondering for the, you know, waiting for the next book, right? Uh, one more question. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. I was wondering, uh, who would you like to have guest star on the show, and what role would you like them to play? Mm. I would love, I, I don't have a specific person, but I would love if we had um, like p an actual polyamorous couple on our show. That would be really, really awesome. Some diversity in that area, that would be great. I'm going to piggyback on yours and say, I, I think, you know, just in terms of increasing diversity is always interesting. Uh, and makes for a more interesting story. I wouldn't mind having like a real transgendered actor. There are so many great actors out there. Um, and I think that that could be brought into our story as well. Totally. I'm going to say Larry Bird <laughs> um, as anything, because he's my, my hero. <laughs> Larry Bird is your hero. I don't know how he would fit in. I grew up in Boston in the 80s. And uh, yeah, in fact, I was doing, a, I was doing stand up in, in Florida uh, like last month. And uh, the comedian that I was working with, he said, you know who's coming tonight? It's, it's Larry, Larry Bird. He's a friend of mine. I was like, oh, my God, this is unbelievable. He's, got a, he's like a dream. <clears throat> and then he didn't show up because it was bad back, which he's had since like the 1980s. So Larry Bird's bad back is still haunting me. <laughs> it's still screwing me over. Maybe so, yeah, he could do maybe anything. Maybe I could it. get me. He could be in a... In, he could in play a part on the show where he's at the bar or something. And yeah. one of you are in... 
bad straights and he gives you advice randomly. There's always That's a character. That's a great yes. plot line for and him. He's, it's like a cameo plot line yeah. for a person like Larry Bird. It's like, oh my God, you're Larry Bird. It's like, yeah. oh, I saw you having problems with your wife. Like, this is what I do with mine. <laughs> Bye. You're like, yeah. oh, Larry Bird really knows what to do. I like LeBron Perfect. James did that in a show. I can't yeah. remember now. Kind of in Trainwreck, that was sort of his. Yeah. Oh that yeah, was that's part yeah. in Trainwreck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or he could just be in the relationship. I mean, I'm not against having Larry Bird just jump in, be, <laughs> be the fourth wheel. Just climb him. You got like more a than tree. a jump shot, Mr. Bird. Get in here. <laughs> yes. We'll let him do whatever he wants. No. Oh no! <laughs> I will let him do whatever. He wants. I'm that big a fan. Larry, if you're watching, yes. Uh, guys, uh, congratulations on the new season. I love the show. Um, when can people watch it? When does it air? The first episode? When does it come out? Uh, tonight. Tonight? Yes. yes. Amazing. Yes. On the Audience Network. Uh, you, me, her. Everybody give them a round of applause. Let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you guys Thank you. for coming. Thank you.